Let's examine a few different methods of handling keyboard input in an MFC application. The first method we'll examine is using pre-translate message. The pre-translate message method needs to be added within the C dialog class specification of the window where you were listening for key events. It will handle key events with C dialogs that have multiple MFC components on them. For example, here's an example of the function definition pre-translate message. In this case, we take one argument. The parameter is a pointer to a message. And this pointer, or this parameter that we pass in, is the key event. So in this example, WM key down. We also have an integer x, but we're getting the parameter from the message. And there are symbolic constants we can use, like VK up, VK down, VK left, VK right, for the arrow buttons. Or we can use escape sequences, like backslash R, for the enter button. You can also use ASCII values with this method. For example, here we have an integer x and the ASCII value is 65, 48, 49, and 50, which represents the lowercase character a, 0, 1, and 2. As an example, here's my definition of pre-translate message. And in this case, I'm accepting one parameter, a message. And when I do, um, that's the event that's triggered, in this case, WM key down. And then I'm getting a parameter from that, which I'm storing in this integer here. And that's just going to be a numerical value based on the key that was pressed. And there's symbolic constants I can use. In this case, VK up, down, left, and right, which are the up, down, left, and right arrow buttons on the keyboard. And I'm just calling the navigation functions, north, south, west, and east. So the player can either click the buttons, or now they'll be able to use the arrow keys to navigate in the game. And then down here, I'm just calling the do method. Well, you had to click the do button on the interface before, but now also if they hit, you know, in this case, enter. The escape sequence backslash R is equivalent to enter. It will also act as a shortcut key for the do button. So to test that out, All right, first I'm going to use the mouse and click start. Now I'm going to click do with the mouse. Choose a category. Now I'm going to hit enter. So notice the mouse will stay here. It'll be stationary. And I'm going to use the shortcut key and the pre-translate method. And now I'm just going to hit the enter button. So it also calls do. Okay, mouse didn't move, but pre-translate, um, in this case, intercepted me pressing the enter key. And that called the do method as well. Alright, so I'm going to do that all the way through. I'll just keep using pre-translate message. Um, and now I'm in the game. Now I'm going to move the mouse down here. I'm going to move around in the game by clicking the mouse. And you can see I'm moving the mouse and clicking the buttons to navigate. Now I'm going to leave the mouse up here and now we're going to use pre-translate message. And these are symbolic constants. You know, VK up, VK down, VK left and right. So just the arrow keys. So now I'm going north, I'm hitting the down arrow, going south, I'm hitting the left arrow, and going west, I'm hitting the right arrow, and going east. So you can see how it works. Just to show you another example, you can also do this with ASCII values. So just Google for ASCII chart if you don't know the ASCII value for something, but in this case the ASCII value 65 represents the lowercase character A. So if I were to rebuild the project like that, and if I hit the A button, then again, pre-translate message will intercept me pressing the lowercase a. And in this case, it'll just fire a message box. So I hit the A button, and then it tells me the A key was pressed. So that'll kind of give you an idea of how pre-translate message works. If you have items on your C dialog, it's kind of one of your only options. Um, you don't want to use the you know on WM key event methods message handlers because uh, they only work if you have like an empty C dialog. So this is usually the method I use when I want to intercept key presses and do shortcut keys and things for a C dialog that has lots of MFC components on it. Let's take a look at another method, in this case using on key down. If you have an empty C dialog, and I truly mean empty, that is with no MFC components added to it, you can use this method. However, if you add anything, buttons, list boxes, etc. to your C dialog, you should use the previous pre-translate message method we just discussed. To implement on key down, first add the message ID on WM key down to the message map tags for your C dialog class. Second, override the method on key down within your C dialog class. Third, retrieve the first argument passed in. 
i.e. in character for example. Here we have an implementation of on key down and in the function definition we're just firing off a message box when that event has been triggered and we're using the first argument in care to get what was pressed and then do something different based on that in both an if and a switch statement. Let's not forget one of the easiest ways of handling keyboard input. You can change the tab order and set a default button on MFC project in Visual Studio. For example, you can always declare a default button on a C dialog forum. So in this example, I have several buttons here. Let's say I wanted to make my start button the default button. I could right click and look at the properties, or if you have the property sheet open on the right, do that. But you want to go under the behavior section and look for the default button behavior. So if I were to set that to be true and rebuild the project, then if I hit the enter key, it would be equivalent to me clicking on the start button. Now when you do this, go and check the code. So I'm just going to open this up in code view. And you want to make sure that the default button is the first declared inside the, you know, underneath the begin tag. So in this case, that's my default push button now. It used to be quit. And you just want to rebuild your project. And to test it, I'll open up the window here. And if I just hit enter, same as clicking on the start button, because that's my default button. Next, let's take a look at mouse events. You can listen for and handle mouse events within MFC applications. To handle left button mouse events, first add the message identifier on WML button down to the message map tags from your C dialog class. Second, override the method on all button down. For example, here we have the function definition of on all button down, and in its implementation we're just firing off a message box when the event is triggered. Here in this first example, I'm in the message map tags for my C dialog window. And down here I've added on WML button down. So when that message ID is heard, it's going to go call the message handler, which is up here. And in this case, on all button down is the message handler. And right now we're just going to fire off a message box. So as an example, let's build the project and test it. And without having to do anything, if we simply click anywhere on the C dialog, it should fire off a message box on the left mouse click. And you can see left mouse clicked, left mouse clicked. To handle right button mouse events, first add the message identifier on WMR button down to the message map tags for your C dialog class, and second override the method on R button down. For example, here we have the function definition on R button down, and in the implementation we're taking two parameters and just firing off a message box. Once again, we're in the message map tags for our C dialog application. And now, instead of on WML button down, I have to add on WMR button down. And when that message ID is heard, I need to come up here and handle it with the method on R button down. That's the message handler. So in the function definition or implementation, we're just going to fire off a message box. And let's build it and test it. And so once I once I bring up the C dialog here, if I left click, nothing happens, but if I right click, I get right mouse clicked. The flags parameter can be one of these symbolic constants. MK control when the control key is down, MKL button when the left mouse button is down, MKM button when the middle mouse button is down, MKR button when the right mouse button is down, and MK shift when the shift key is down. The XY parameter in this example is a C point object that represents the X and Y coordinates where the mouse was clicked. So here in this function definition or the implementation of on all button down, the C point XY can give us both the X and Y coordinates of where the mouse was clicked. And then we have to convert it to a simple character array so we can then concatenate it to a C string and display it. Once again in the message map tags for our C dialog window, if you look down here, we've added the message ID on WML button down. And we have to handle it with the appropriate message handler. So here in the function definition and implementation of on all button down, we're just going to declare a C string and a character array, use I to A to convert the X and Y data members of our X, Y, C point object, and then we'll display the X and Y coordinates of where the mouse was clicked, and we'll set it in our C edit control on the left of our C dialog. That's what our pointer points to here. So if we build this,
and test it. Now if I click on the background, notice here's x coordinate was 515, y coordinate was 147, 775, 144. What you can see as I click at different areas on the form, it's giving me the x and y coordinates from the C point, or the x and y data members from the C point. 